you know that an average of 20 people die every day because of a long waiting list to get an organ transplant? Hmm. Hi, my name is Musamo, and with me here is... Stephanie Ronald, and you're welcome to... Tech Tech News. News. <laughs> now, today on the show, we're going to be talking about 3D bioprinting. Bio -printing. It's an interesting conversation. Yeah. Make sure you don't go anywhere. We'll be back after this short break. Hello, guys. You're welcome back from that short break. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, before we go into the conversation proper, I need you to like this video, share with your friends, and of course, subscribe to the Dabba TV channel. Okay? Now, Musa, today we're talking about 3D, 3D bioprinting. Bio yeah. And I liked what you said earlier. But let's go into the main conversation. Okay. What is 3D bioprinting? Okay, well, like I said earlier, yes. an average of 20 people die every day hmm. because of the long line of you know getting a donor and yeah. all of those things mm -hmm. so what if mm -hmm. we no longer require a donor that long list like yeah, you don't need somebody else to give you their organ exactly mm -hmm. what if an organ is created which already has life you can simply just be put into you and then you continue to live so you're trying to tell me that right now human beings we can create organs sure we can create organs did you just hear that? <laughs> and that's where 3D bioprinting comes in. Amazing. It's like, it's, it's just the process of creating or transferring a 3D image or mm -hmm. model mm -hmm. into the real life, all right? And giving it life with what we call bio ink. Now this bio ink already has living cells within them. Mm -hmm. So when those bio inks or when this bio ink is used to create this 3D model mm -hmm. in real life, mm -hmm the 3d models already now has life in them in them so, so they are breathing they are yeah. living they so are doing so everything I could similar to exactly normal tissue or normal cell in my body exactly so i could say those bio inks are like the the oxygen hmm. that feeds the 3d model which hmm. cannot be used back inside the human body okay yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I need a lot to take in. Remember yeah. one of the things that we said we're going to do in this show is to break down these big things to yeah. look as simple as possible. possible. Now before we do that, we're going to go and watch this video that will give you a detailed explanation of what 3D, 3D printing looks like and you know the process of how the models come out after the printing process. We'll be right back. I'm Dr. Benasser, and my lab makes ears. The invention that we've uh, discovered is a way to uh, print living cells in a material uh, that can uh, be used to reconstruct tissues in the body. My laboratory is interested in regenerating cartilage wherever it's found in the body. The process starts with a scan of an ear. We sit someone down in a in a chair, and we have a camera that spins around their head and takes a 3D image of their, of their head. We then can very precisely map out the topology of the ear. The next kind of key step is developing the ink for this printer. This ink is actually a living ink. It contains living cells. It's alive when we put it into the printer. It's alive when it comes out of the printer. The real power of the printing technique is that it can be used to make geometries that you just can't make with any other technique. You can make parts with holes in them. We can layer and, and cover and, and put different uh, cells next to each other to create really the complex organs that make up our bodies. And after two months in an incubator, the tissue fills in and looks white just like real cartilage. The implants that we're making um, are not rubber or, or plastic. Um, they are alive. They, they uh, grow inside the body or out. And this has a whole host of advantages over, over conventional technology. The body accepts these materials like it's part of the body because it is. Our long-term goals are to change the way that, that uh, clinicians practice, to give them the next generation of implants that will be uh, more successful, more like real tissue that will last in the body for, for decades. Hi guys, welcome back to Tech This, and I hope you have been enjoying the show so far. Yeah. Please do not forget to like, share, 
and comment below and also stay to the end of this video because we are just getting started yep so the video we had watched earlier discussed of processes involved in bio printing mm -hmm. 3d bio printing specifically mm -hmm. so we still want to throw a little more light on that subject so stephanie what do you think about the three stages and processes of the 3d bio printing well basically uh, first of all let me debunk a myth before we go forward mm -hmm. <laughs> Musa and I are not scientists. No, not at all. Uh, hey. <laughs> what we're doing is just helping lay men like you and I out there understand what these things are. And so that we are carried along. Let it not be that tomorrow you're hearing 3D bioprint and, and you're lost, lost <laughs> as to <laughs> what the term even means at all. Yeah. Okay, so that you're conversant with the happenings in technology. Now, the processes in 3D bioprinting, basically, um, you have you know, the pre uh, bioprinting stage, yeah. which allows you to create the model. You're talking about the shape, how is it going to look like? What Standing are the components the exactly yeah. involved? Uh, like I said, as you were printing a tissue, what are the things involved in that tissue? There is no room for mistake. Not at all. <laughs> at all, because the machine prints what you have given it. Garbage like, in. Exactly, garbage, garbage out. out. So there is no room for mistake. That you need to print it exactly as you know, the light tissue, how a tissue looks. That they're trying to replicate. You need to, it has to be exact. Perfect, yeah. uh -huh. So that's what the process of the pre-printing stage does. You look at the model created and all of that. Then you have the bioprinting itself. Yeah. Um, and that's the process of you, like we saw in the video, having to bring those um, live cells and combining them with a base. Now, yeah. a base can be anything, can be collagen it can be gel yeah. whatever the person that is manufacturing wants to use now you combine those living cells that have already been grown with those uh, with, with that base and then you put it it becomes an ink now that's the ink that is used in printing that model we just saw from the previous video and of course you have the post bioprinting stage mm -hmm. where um, you take all of this what, what has been printed you take that part and you you incubate it you put it in a stable environment Remember that those tissues are in our body. Yeah, and our yeah. body has a certain temperature, it has its, you know, be, certain, yeah. a lot of things have to be proper for it to grow properly. So we create that simulation, we create that atmosphere for this tissue to actually grow it's, properly. Now, that right. is the summary of what bioprinting is. And by the time it's grown properly to the stage where it can now uh, function, you know, like the actual living um, tissue then it can now be transplanted into the human body, basically speaking. Subarashi. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of the day, you see, if we've been able to successfully do this with tissues and all of that, we can, we're not looking at how we can create organs, the kidney, the heart, the Liver. lung. Exactly. So you create the models. I think right now there are already like mini, um, mini, structures and mini shapes of yeah that have been that have been created, been created yes. so that they can Important. enable you mm. know testing and from there voila we're gonna That's have wild. new hearts new lungs <laughs> new you know, you know the way you are saying it is actually scaring me <laughs> <laughs> and it's actually fun at the same time so yeah it's uh, scary and fun i agree yeah like if somebody is involved in an accident mm -hmm. and the doctor just comes and smile did you break a leg did, did, you break did, you, did you break a bone? We're going to remodel oh, one. Remodel oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine like, go, go, it go. just happens like, and, and you know, these things take like, it's not, it's not so long ago. No. By the time you start, it doesn't, it doesn't take like, you know, you can be on a waiting list for like two years, right? For, for, to get or the even more. Donor. And you may not still get it. And you will not die. <laughs> <laughs> but with 3D printing, like it can increase the lifespan of human beings by another, I, I, I don't even know the number to give you. I it. think it takes 20. 28 to 48 hours to get yeah. the model. So the, the more we keep doing this, the more, you know, but for bigger organs, it will take more. Yeah, because uh, definitely. Right now, yes, we're not, we're not there yet with, you know, printing big, like the full organ, like the heart. It's because they are very, very complicated. Um, God, they create. Don't worry. Good, good. <laughs> so it's, it's we're, awesome. still, we're still not there yet, but trust me, the technology is growing and it is very getting fast. there very, very, very super very fast. fast. Now, let me shock you. Did you know that right now they are working on creating? Uh, uh, they've gone some. They've gone far in creating skin. Um, 
you know, cosmetology, like skin, creatine. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> so by getting to a place there, you can actually have a skin that is fire resistant. Fire cannot burn you. <laughs> I'm sure, like, fire, your skin is fire resistant. Oh, that's, 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 that's crazy. That's another level, actually. Nah, I know. So when people lose their skin, you know, to fire, fire or stuff, they can, they can actually recreate it. So that's going to reduce stigma, uh, stigmatization exactly. of human beings, really. Exactly. It's a lot, it's like, there's a lot of advantages involved wow. with 3D bioprinting. But like I said, we're still far over, ah, we have made progress. Because yeah, right now, <laughs> yeah, if we're able to print um, bone, it, the bone itself. Yes, yes. They've made a lot of progress in being able to print the bone, being able to print the tissues in between, you know, bone marrows and all of that. Yeah. They've been able to print those tissues that help, um, you know, your bone movement and all of that. For people that have Artilages, injuries, knee injuries, uh, hand, eyes, yeah. exactly, they are solving that currently. Right so imagine where we're heading to with 3D bioprinting. Wow. <laughs> it's a long journey. <laughs> It's, but it's I, I can't wait. I can't wait for the future. Uh, so you want to get the skin transplant so you can well, fire? Well, well, <laughs> that skin is going to be a lot more, you know, to be fine now. Ah, ah. Doesn't age, doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be expensive. <laughs> we can afford it. So ah. There is Bitcoin. Ah, ah. Don't worry. Hey, we're getting there. <laughs> Interesting. Right. Now, I think we should have the conversation about um, what are some of the careers that people yeah. out there should be looking at. I, mean, I, was, I was actually going to say that okay. because it's very, very important. Yeah. So some of the careers that a 3D bioprinting applies to, you know, obviously medicine. Yeah, it's a lot to do with health. Yeah. I think there's something the 3D bioprinting technician, yeah. especially someone mm -hmm. who specializes in mm -hmm. operating it. Mm -hmm. um, even an educator, because it was a point of 3D when there's nobody there to pass this knowledge mm -hmm. Yeah, to, across, to, to, teach to teach others teach about it. About yeah. There, there are a lot of, if you're in the medical sector, you know, um, especially you're a medical student, one of the things I would advise is, yeah. you know, people like tend to copy. Very, very true. That's it's, it's easy to just follow the trend. It's easy to just, um, okay, everybody is being, everybody is a, it's a, what do they call those, you know, in medicine, they are special fields. It's Everybody is the general general medicine, the general medicine, I think. I, I think there's also gynecologists, um, gynecologist, yeah. you know, the, yeah. the uh, physician. Auto, auto, auto pay, <laughs> okay, not sure you about <laughs> <laughs> But you get the point I'm trying to make. Yes, so uh, you have like different fields of medicine and a lot of times people just follow the crowd. There's the general one that everybody just likes. is what is bringing more money. Exactly. So you run and follow it. But I'm saying that in this age and time, there is a lot that is demanded in, you know, for specialty. Specialty. People yeah. are looking for specialists, right? And the market might seem situa situated right now with, you know, those common um, types of uh, yeah, medicine. Fields, yeah. But you see 3D bioprinting, it's like a drop in the ocean. It's something that I think that every medical student should start looking, looking at. at yeah. And I want to say this particularly to... Uh, because we have a Nigerian and African audience that do not limit yourself with the environment that we are. People are going out there to get it at every cost, cost. and it is possible. Um, if, if you're a lab scientist, you can start looking at branching into, into 3D bioprinting, bio printing, start yes. researching about it. You can become, you know, uh, particular, specific to, 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 this, to, to, this, to this particular yeah. field. And before you know it, they've carried you and go abroad. You know, uh, abroad. <laughs> you come back here <laughs> and come and help our life, but you get the point. Yeah. Um, there are also conversations about um, scientists. Obviously, there are yes, conversations scientists. about people who are into management. It doesn't just even stop there. When I saw that it also relates to those who study mathematics. Yeah, geometry. geometry. Yeah, geometry. I was, I was yeah, surprised. because it deals with shapes and forms. So yeah. there's a lot of you, if you're into that field, start looking at things like that. Look I mean, at it. Future. And I think they're even technicians, even engineering. If you're an engineer, there are, there's a lot of opportunities in 3D bioprinting because um, they need technicians to mount some of these things. Thing, so yeah. you are needed in that particular sector. You should start looking at it. Okay? Very, 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 very important. <sighs> that was actually a lot, even for me discussing this with you, Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually a lot because I didn't really look at it this way until we started discussing about it. And are you sure? I was there, yeah. Okay. I'm thinking of actually looking at 3D now. Are you sure that your brain can carry anything inside you? 
Come on. Come on. <laughs> okay, I was just kidding. But ah. it's a lot of work. Oh. It's not as easy as we're yeah, making obviously. it sound. But it's you know, not. like, this is just the basics of what 3D, but it's like the basic of the basic. If you know what that means. <laughs> of what 3D bioprinting is about. There is a lot if you go in depth. I'll encourage you guys to research and look at some of these things. We'll leave some links for you uh, in, the in the description, description yeah. for you to follow for those of you who are interested in a career path yeah. and for you to get more information about 3D, 3D bioprinting. bioprinting. Okay. Um, uh, and I also think that one of the burning questions yeah. about 3D bioprinting is the fact that do human beings stand a chance at immortality? immortality. Because what this means is if we're able to create <coughs> these big organs yeah, yeah. from scratch, um, when somebody is sick and is at the point of death, death, you can just replace it. Um, these cells even last longer than, than the, the regular cells. The normal natural cells that we have. So the question is, do mm -hmm. human beings have a shot at immortality? Musa. <laughs> 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 what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> at this point, I don't even know if I should say no. Because okay. my no will not be sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yet? are you maybe or yes, no, or... I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence right now. You know, because... If you look at it, uh -huh. we have a shot at immortality. Mm. So you're tilting towards yes. And then we still do not have a shot. Still one place. Do, like you, do you know why I said why, that? Why? Because after all, we are still humans. Uh -huh. Okay. And we have what is called a soul, right? Mm -hmm. So okay, until we can create a soul, <laughs> I don't think <laughs> we can attain immortality. Mm, that's the point. That's a point. So I feel I should. But you know, at the, what the, the point, the, the argument is, it is the human body that yeah. degenerates. Yeah, maybe we could stay a lot longer or a little longer than yeah, it's that's usual. Normal. But we still die. One of the things I feel is the fact that the question you should be asking is, can we create everything? We can. Because you need everything to function. Obviously, you, the heart might be one. What about the lungs? What about the what about the blood? What about the cells? What about oxygen? There are a lot of other things. Even so the brain. The brain, exactly. So all of those things you are asking, I are able to create. That means you're creating a full human being. Uh -huh. uh, so with anyways, with let us not conclude. There's still a long Wait shot to go. <laughs> so guys, drop your comments below and let's tell us know what, what do you think? think. What do you think? Do you think that we have stand a shot at immortality? Can we create the heart? Can we create the lungs, the liver, the kidney? What are Ooh. your opinions? We'd like to hear from you in the comment section. <laughs> All right, guys. That was an amazing discussion with you, Steph. Thank you. And before we close, before we exit this episode today, okay. I have a game for you. <coughs> you, know, you know, last <coughs> week you, you robbed me of my pride. Are you serious? <laughs> we have to... Well, you did well now. Ah. You did well. Anyways, really? Okay, so I'm going to give you 10 seconds, and you're going to spell Stephanie backwards. You will not shame me. me. You will not shame me. <laughs> Are you ready? <coughs> In three, two, one, go. E I N P H T E P. I don't even know how to spell it. I can't believe that. Oh my you can God. Ah. Oh my God. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm so ashamed of myself. That was a wrap. Oh my God. Did I just feel that? You did. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> next week. I'll have that was a wrap. Next and week. It was so amazing. So, guys, do not forget, like we said earlier, to like, yeah. share, comment and on subscribe. this video. And subscribe. Subscribe. Also. So, we'll see you guys next week. Bye bye.